I wrote about another game at my family casino. The living room in my grandparents' home was used for a card game when the house turned into a family casino during New Year's. The game was a blackjack-like one called Kabu and organized by my uncle. It used to be the best treat of New Year's for me in my childhood and early in my teens. Unlike Mortar Roller I had introduced before, this game was played seriously and intensely because it was for high stakes. The players usually bet a dollar or more, sometimes as high as a hundred dollars. The farther into the night it got, the higher the bet went. The family members would leave the table one by one, as the higher bet would make them tense and deprive them of pleasure. As for me, I liked to see the game get heated so much and would play throughout the night until the game came to an end in the next morning. The usual players who stayed at the table near dawn would be my uncle who was a dealer, my eldest cousin, my mother and I. My uncle was a successor of the family by marriage and so my grandparents were his in-laws. He was on terrible terms with my grandmother who raised my eldest cousin in place of him and his wife because they were too busy working at the family farm. Consequently, he didn't get along well with his own son either. New Year's Kabu would become an intense battle between my uncle and my cousin by dawn. My uncle couldn't lose especially to his son and that made the game extraordinarily thrilling. My cousin would bet more than $10 on each deal and my heart would be pounding by seeing bills on the table. My uncle would concentrate on the cards dealt to him and his son too deeply to care about my small bets. Because he would forget to count me in and settle my deal thoughtlessly each time, I would end up winning quite a big amount of money in total every year. He would summon all his strength when he saw the last card dealt to him. In spite of his prayer like chance come on. Come on, most of the time the card would be the least one he had wanted. Hand after hand, he drew the worst card possible while my cousin was rolling on the tatami floor to stifle his giggling. As far as I remember, he had never won against my cousin. He was manly and frank, but I can still picture him going back to his room after the game in the morning light with unsteady steps, worn out, drooping, and on the verge of tears. Three months after the house was burned down, he died of cancer without becoming the head of the family. Audiobook, Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. I wrote about a battle between Sister Carmela, me, and my mother. Back in my Catholic school days, a teacher for home economics was Sister Carmela. I was in her cooking class. I had no interest in cooking at all and all I did during the class was giggling with my friends and washing the dishes. I simply couldn't take anything in the class seriously. Homemaking seemed ridiculous to me, and to begin with, I could laugh endlessly when I thought about a sister called Carmela teaching how to make caramel. As I was lazy all the time chatting and giggling, Sister Carmela often had to call my name in front of the class and shush me. She also noticed I hadn't participated in any cooking but just been doing the dishes. No matter how hard and often she scolded me for my bad attitude, I didn't obey and kept making other students laugh. Her patience snapped at last and she called me before the principal. In my school, bad students were close to zero and a student was hardly ever called to the principal's office. The principal was Sister Mary Catherine who reasonably believed I had done something extraordinarily wrong. But she was taken aback when Sister Carmela told her that I had fooled around during the class. She looked at her face with an impression of that's it? After mildly telling me to behave myself, she let me go. Sister Carmela's punishment didn't work and my bad behavior continued. I was in her sewing class next year. Again, I slacked and asked my friend to make a skirt for me. Sister Carmela found that out when I turned in the skirt pretending I had sewn it. That snapped her completely. She decided to appeal directly to my parents and called up my mother that evening. Over the phone, she told her at length how bad I had been in her class. She blamed my bad attitude on my mother's lack of discipline. My mother kept apologizing for a long time, but her tone gradually changed. As Sister Carmela strongly criticized my mother's way of raising a child, my mother suddenly yelled, I have no reason to listen to someone who has never married nor had a child. And hung up violently. I was stunned because it sounded to me the most insulting remark about a sister. She said to me, who does she think she is? She has never raised a child herself and yet looks down on me who did raise a child. You don't have to obey such a stuck-up person. 
And Sister Carmela stopped complaining about my behavior ever since. Audiobook, Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. Audiobook, The Family in Kyoto, One Japanese Girl Got Freedom by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple Books, Google Play, Audible, 43 available distributors in total. Audiobook. Living in Kyoto by Hitomi Woods. Now on sale in online stores. 44 available distributors. Apple, Google Play, Amazon Audible, or else. Listening,英語テキストとMP3ダウンロードその他の物語はホームページからお聞きいただけます。88thpp.com 88thpp.com ダイコーヒョウヒデミウッズがデザインしたとっても可愛いオリジナルグッズが手に入るトートバッグ、缶バッチ、ステッカー、T シャツ、トレーナー、パーカー、文具、その他いろいろ。エリゼンドットコムで見てみてね。E R I Z E N ドットコム。E R I Z E N ドットコム。エリゼンドットコム。